done here. Okay, well, it's the next morning. And, uh, I'm gonna get up in here in the old 76 Blazer and check my uh, gasket, my off TV gasket maker, and see if it's uh, dry enough to start it up. I want to make sure it's really dry because I've always had trouble with these. So. Uh, pretty, a lot of light up there. I was fixing the looking to see if I need it. Well, I still might need it. Yeah, that way I can use the light as a power source for my camera. <clears throat> I think I'll grab a couple of tools. plugged up over here I wasn't really thinking oh I'm going straight over here I was going to pick the camera up and take it with me so let's see put it over here I actually did that for a little while yesterday when the other one went down on me let's see but I need to keep it plugged in it, the other one went down the battery went down because I didn't have it plugged in so, I turned, well I had it plugged in, and I fooled around and turned it off by accident, by, uh, let's see, trying to get it in a place where it won't want to tip over, it's pretty unbalanced for staying there, that'll hold it, now. Carburetor good, but not since it's that close. That's pretty close. Give a better view than the other camera, I guess. Put these tools in the ladder. They always want to poke me or fall out. I like the handiness, but they don't like of my little carpenter's pants. But I don't like it when things fall or whatever. All right, yeah, the sun's in. The it's earlier in the morning. It's about seven, around 7.30 today. Yeah. So the sun's up. Giving me a little light. Oh. That's not the way I figured out how to get in here. That's not the good way. Put the right leg in first and then the left leg. I think I'm... What have I been doing? There's some way I can kind of swing up. My butt hurts from sitting on this so long yesterday. I didn't show what it looks like, but it's got a... The way this uh, front end is made, it's got a rise right up. When you want to sit here, I always, actually a long time ago, I had like a piece of wood I could put up in here and make it more level. It wouldn't hurt. But I had gotten to where I was up here so much that uh, it didn't hurt anymore really. But now I'm used to a cushion chair. Not the front end of a Chevy Blazer or any other hard surface. Uneven hard surface. Yeah, I got, well you can't see the leaves right now, but if you could, you'd say get those out of there. Let's see. Yeah, I need to get all, I'm going to get all those leaves out of here before, because they're, <laughs> I mean it doesn't really matter, it's an old truck and I wouldn't care, but you know, I care. I want to get the leaves out of here, so they're going to open the hood. They always do that, even though it only has to have a safety inspection. They still get under here most of the time. Half the time they think it's an 80, this is 76, they think it's an 80s because there's people so young, they never even seen a 76. <laughs> they may have seen one, but they didn't know. If they kept the same bottle style for 10 or 15 years, you 
just change the headlights and some of the trim. Okay, so. You know, I think it's dry. Pretty doggone rubbery. What do you say? <sighs> Can't see it, can you? Okay, let's see. That's the thing, the only thing I'm worried about is that. Well, actually the bowl too. Of course, the, the, what's inside's probably not completely dry. Of course, it cured, I think it, I don't know how much, well, air makes it dry, I know that, because um, if you leave the cap off, it dries, you know, put the whole tube up, so, before you know it. Yeah, let me check the plug wires and stuff, I could have knocked some around working. Sure they're all in the right place. I actually have to be careful because they're this thing has headers. They will melt the plug wire in a heartbeat. Oh, you let them get touching. They do pretty good at scaling, uh, surprisingly. But uh, oh, working on trucking, I got grease on my arm. The horrors. I'm just not used to it. I don't know what I hit. Let's see. Um, oh, I hit the back end of that valve cover. Yeah, those valve covers are, have been leaking a little bit of oil for years. Uh, not much. It actually doesn't drip a whole lot and doesn't use up oil. It doesn't burn oil at all. I had this motor rebuilt when I bought the truck and I think it was 92. I keep getting mixed up. And uh, it's still good. I didn't try, put a lots of miles on it and I didn't abuse it. That's uh, put a had them put a 195 lift cam in it, so it's set up for low end torque because it had 35 inch mud tires on it. Now it only has 33s because I couldn't afford to buy new ones, I bought used ones. And that's all I could find. But uh, I used to always keep BF Goodrich or uh, the off brand of BF Goodrich, they look just like the BF Goodrich mud trains, the old, older ones. Uh, Bud King. They're not as good. They're soft and actually when they get old, even though they got lots and lots of tread, when they get old they'll blow out. Like if they get five to seven years old, they'll just sit there blow, sitting still in the driveway, they'll blow out. So I would never buy those Mud Kings again. The Beef Goodrich will too when they get really over seven years. Uh, sometimes, but it depends with them. But they're a little bit better at that. I think a lot of those these those kind of tires will do that from what I've read online in the last few years. But uh, those tires are so expensive. It's, you're going to spend a thousand to twelve hundred to get tires on it every time, you know, to get new ones. I think I'm going to go ahead and charge it. Charge it. I'm gonna, it's already charged. It should crank just fine. I charged it yesterday. I figured. I realized when I was done. Uh, I've been working, I never did for, I didn't know for sure exactly when I started. I either worked on it for three or four hours and that charger was on there most of the time. So I think all that noise was the battery and it, there was some stuff dripped down on the ground there and I thought it was from me mas mashing on this water hose and shoving it out the overflow. But uh, I thought, well, maybe that tank has a hole in it or something because it has a tank. And then I realized, oh, I think that might have been the battery bubbling over a little bit. There's something there on the top. Oddly enough, it's right around the negative cable. Not No signs of leakage near the... Uh, no signs of leakage near the uh, caps. It does have caps you can take off. I need to look in there. Or even try to start it. I'm going to look in there and see uh, if it needs water after all that charging for that long. I didn't mean to charge it more than two hours. Yeah. But that right there on the right, I can't get my finger in there, but, but the, you can tell by the color of the, the, the casing I put on those cables. Those are uh, double lock cables. Tell you what, that's something if you didn't know, the, uh, if you, see I set the timing by ear to where it runs the best. Just advance, advance the timing until it starts missing. Just. Uh, you can do that with these older vehicles. Advance the turn the distributor uh, until it starts missing, and uh, then just a little bit, and then go back and just until it quits. And that's the best performance you'll get uh, out of them. But they, when they're warmed up good, they don't really want to crank too well. But if you can, and I have the biggest battery I can buy, 
uh, that'll fit in here. The biggest. Well, I've had bigger ones like I used to always get interstates, but this is a Duralast from Old not O'Reilly's uh, AutoZone, and um, it's I don't remember how many years old it is. That's not too old, but uh, it was pretty good. Uh, but anyway, I put these big cables on it. I think before I even got this battery, <coughs> I had them left over when I used to work in the telco. There were some scraps, and because uh, they're really it's really expensive stuff, and uh, so I bought some cover, you know, plastic slip-on cover stuff to protect them because they're really meant for inside of a telephone company telecommunications office. They're not meant to be under the hood of a vehicle. Uh, I don't think it would really matter. They got pretty darn good insulation on them. But it's not going to melt or anything. It's rated up to pretty high. Look, it's, it's written on it. It's rated up to pretty high temperatures. But, but anyway, I just wanted to protect them. And also that gives me a color code. Uh, <coughs> quick, quick glance at you know, which is hot and which is negative. And uh, it, it ever since I did that, it cranked over perfect, even when it was setting three or four months. Uh, and what it would do real bad, sometimes it, it wouldn't even start. You know, you'd have to sit there and let it cool down a little bit once in a while. Uh, with those smaller, normal, you know, like four gauge or whatever cables on it. I can't remember the, all my gauges all that good, but uh, and the smaller the number, the bigger the cable. So double odd is super big. I mean, they, the actual wire in there is like three quarter inch, I think. Or more. Uh, you can kind of see that they're big. Yeah. Anyway, I'm gonna leave the camera where it is and go around and pop those caps before I do anything else. Before I have to crank it or anything. It's gonna be a real good idea. <sighs> I think I'll get my. I don't like getting uh, battery acid all in my hands, so it heats your hands up. So I'm gonna get me some gloves. I'll get these ones that I had for my sprayer yesterday, my poison sprayer. Running low on my little gloves. I had a big old box of these blue natural gloves. And, uh, let's see. So, uh, I need to get some. I'm trying to get this thing out of the way. Oh no, that's good. Very good. Okay. Let's check this one. It's good too. Well, at least I didn't uh, oh, boil the water of the battery. It had uh, 13 volts or 13. I say it was $13.95, but I don't remember now. Well, let me get my, let's see what it is today. Let me get my voltmeter truck here. Get my voltmeter and wipe the ass off my screwdriver. Mm. I'm not used to this thing being covered in dust. bit concerned that this battery could be uh, getting old and actually uh, could be prematurely wearing out. Well, 53 now after setting, so that's good. It didn't go down fast. It ain't bad. Now I'm not going to try to show it. It'll be too much trouble. So, uh, yeah, that's good. I'll just leave it here, and then once I get it started, I 
can uh, check it again, see what it's charging and everything. Let my battery hold down, those bungee cords work wonders. I used to, I did, oh no, you know what lasts longer? I don't know if you can see that. You know what lasts longer than a metal battery tray? Piece of, piece of plywood. I think you can see it if you pay attention underneath the battery. It's so dark from it being old. That's not even, you know, it's not even water, uh, bolt grade, uh, water grade. He said the right words, but anyway, it's not even that. Just regular old uh, fur plywood. I've had two or three of them in there since 92. That's how long they last. I mean, that one's looking kind of ragged, but it ain't fell apart yet. And I put that silver silver bracket in there. That's something, I don't know. I don't know what it was, but that just gave me something to hook my hooks to. And it, and it helped hold up that board, too. And I didn't have a piece just wide enough to go out there on top of it. I think it wouldn't fit up in the front, so I, yeah, it has to fit in the tray. The tray completely rusted out, but the front part of the bracket was still good. You can't see it. Oh, there it is. Bottom left corner behind the positive cable. So I've just been putting a board in there. Turns out, I just did it, you know, as a temporary fix when I was in a hurry one time, and it turns out it was a good thing. Sometimes the things that you think are, oh, the wrong thing to do for a car or whatever can be better. I always wanted to build a new one and everything now that I have a welder, but really I'd like to build an aluminum one, but I don't have, it'll weld aluminum if you buy the bottle, gas bottle and all that. I've got the kit, but I don't have any gas. I've never welded aluminum, I've only watched it in the building. Alright, I think we're ready to try to start up. Make sure this thing will, yeah, it won't, it won't fall because it's hooked on the, the hook for the hood. Let's see, I think, okay. Uh, grab a drink of water and start it up. That's kind of crappy looking. I'm going to have to clean that filter when I get done with this. It's full of crap. It's been sitting around, I guess. Uh, I'm going to use my little trick. I'll show it. It wasn't going to, but... I want to show you what... Another little idea that actually helped me out a lot over the years here. When you got... A lot of times you have a vehicle that... You don't know why. Like I told about it yesterday, but my... Uh, Turn this up some. My uh, I'm not sure what I, I didn't pay attention when I was in there. Okay. Oh. It didn't want to. It would lose its uh, the fuel. It would lose its. I think it's like lose like a pump using, losing its prime. But what it was is the 
the hoses on the back of the gas tank were cracked. And so I kept having to get under the hood and spray, either, you know, WD-40. All I had was WD-40 to start with. Then I got some starting fluid. But here's what I rigged up. I talked about it yesterday. Okay, you can't really see it the way the light is, but... Okay, that's a vacuum line that runs all the way up to the intake manifold. Now, how am I going to get this set up? Let's see. Let's just put it over here on the seat or something. Now, if I can get to where I can see where I'm aiming, get the height right, maybe I can do it. I'll go around and aim it. Ah, no, that ain't gonna work. Let's see. Is that gonna work? Nothing's working here. Okay, my toolbox might do it. Except for then I can't see how I'm aiming. Alright. I can still go around and aim it, I think. That was a pretty good guess. Okay, we'll leave it right there. Oh, he's... Yep, still recording. Okay. I'm gonna open these windows. It's hot. Shut it, didn't it? Cool. Stuff going in my face. So I put this wing nut in there to keep it capped off. You, and when you get, as soon as you spray some in there, you can put your thumb over it to keep it from making it run bad. But it was just already made that way, so I don't know where I can put it for you to see it. But pretty handy. Found one like that. And get my starting fluid ready and so one hand you crank it and the other side hand you spray if you get that hose up in there like that you spray with one hand and sometimes it'll come out on you oh god I think I can't see it but There's something in there. I think it's a, one of those tubes. I remember dropping one in there and trying to get it out and couldn't get it. I need a small screwdriver, I guess. It could be. I can't see it, but I think that's what it must be. I tried blowing it back out with an air blower and everything, but I never got it. I'm going to grab a small screwdriver. I'd like to get it if I can. Huh. Well. I'll just leave it. I mean, this will go through there. I'll just leave it right now. Good. See, that's why you lose it. Now let's go out there and look. See how everything's doing. Oh, cut the cap on. Now, Whitish smoke, but 
Never had any blue smoke or anything bad like that. I haven't been starting, uh, it's been started in the last few months. I didn't remember that. Watch out for that fan. I didn't get in it though. We're good. Woohoo! Ah, let me go check my bogey. I haven't checked the brake fluid yet. I'll do that when I kill it. Choke seems to be working okay. I mean, it was never closed because it's warm weather, of course. But it's about 80, I think. I looked at. I didn't look at that in my local town, but the next one over was 80. Actually, that filter's not too bad now that I look at it. There's a little bit of crap in there. I think once I kill it, it'll... It's back to touching my... I don't know. I, it gets like that all... It gets that way and I don't realize it. And it stays that way for years. Let's see. Yeah, okay. Cool. This thing is hard to adjust. It hasn't hurt it any. I've seen them get rubbed almost in two right then, right there. I've tried putting stuff there, but it won't stay, and it wants to come loose and get in the fan and stuff. So, uh, get it to warm up a little bit. Can't really feel the radiator very in one spot over there by the fill. It's not really warm. I just feel that the air coming off of it's a lot warmer than it was a minute ago. Yeah, it, do it dogs down when you hit it like that, but it ain't warm yet either. It may not, uh, may still be doing that. Last few times I drove it, it, uh, oh, I didn't plug in the battery. Last few times I drove it, it, it had a 
battery charger. It didn't seem like it was running as good as it should. <coughs> of course, it's got old gas in it. I think I'll kill it. <laughs> okay, so no leaks. <coughs> no leaks whatsoever. Good. That is fantastic. <coughs> now, go ahead and check the. Uh, do no good. You really need to put it in gear. You really need to drive it for you to get a good check on the transmission. Where's the. Can't see the brake thing? Oh, there it is in the top corner. This one is a better tripod in some ways, but it doesn't have a handle, so it's really tricky to. <sighs> tricky to adjust. Probably could take a little bit in the back there. Let's see if I have any in the cab. Or I should have some in the cab. Cover that up for dust. Okay, here we go. Brand new. A little in the front too. There we go. And as much as I hate putting a little bit of that on my finger, weird feeling stuff on my fingers, it really stops this from sticking and getting torn up next time you open it up. So do that. Especially if you don't open it up once every year or so. What's that drill that I didn't off of in there? But when I drove it, whatever. Okay, I found... Let's go to the other side and look around a little bit. I'll show this before I forget. I found it. I've got probably about a, well, I've got, oh, got about 10 and a half ounces or 11 ounces, yeah, of the Lucas Upper Cylinder Lubricant Injector Cleaners, Fuel Conditioners, oh, that's what everything they mean. Oh, it's got all that in it. Uh, Neutralizes poor quality fuel, treats 100 gallons. Oh yeah, so, anyway, this actually, I think, made a difference when I poured it in my old gas, and this is about as old as it gets. Let me get this and read it. Tells you somewhere on here how much to put per,
supposed to help with pre-ignition, loss of compression. Yeah, it's not going to do that. Burn valves, broken engines. What? Broken rings. Yeah, it's not going to help with any of that. But it did seem to make me feel better. Anyway, it... Uh, where's that measuring thing? Add approximately 3 ounces for every 10 gallons of fuel. I have to look at the, uh, see how much is in there. This holds about 25 gallons, I think. And, uh, let's see. Let's go, around, let's go around and look at that, I guess. And then I'll put my air cleaner on. And Yeah, let's throw that in the seat. Let's see if we can get some brake fluid on the seat. What's that? I have a little basket. It was a milk basket or something. I put all my stuff like that in it. It keeps it from rolling everywhere. Uh, uh, tripod is not too good for getting into confined spaces with the legs sticking out. Let's see. I'll just start it again and shut the I thought maybe it would knock some of that light off the gauges, but I don't think it's going to. You can see the fuel anyway. Oh, it's a half tank now. Sometimes it, I can't remember. It's been so long. It doesn't move much. So I've got a little over half a tank, so... I guess I'll only need about... I already forgot what it said. I think it's three ounces per ten or something. So I don't need to pour, I was going to pour the whole thing in there, but I don't need to do that. Okay. Some of that stuff has got stu uh, chemicals in them that will actually cause your fuel to burn at a lot hotter temperature. And it can burn a valve on you if you put too much. So don't just think motor's better on all this stuff. If you didn't know that already. Let's see what my resting battery... I don't know if I can get this to this down here or not. I'll try to. If I can get one to get it to stay in there. These points are extremely short. That's good because I've had trouble in recent years. I had some that were like an inch and a half long on my old uh, analog Radio Shack meter. And also burned up two power supplies before I had bought this, trying to make a power supply amp. Yeah, this is not working. Let's try and see if I can get the hot one to stay on there. And then I can hold the other one. There's no place in here to get it. Well, that one stays. But I don't know if it's making a connection. We'll find out. Yep. Okay. Now that's a lot of reflection on there. I don't know if you can read it, but that's 1279. That's good. Of course, that's right after killing it, but... That's good. Okay. <clears> the <throat> only other thing I really need to check under here? Well, I need to check the water. should have done that before I started it. Okay. I don't have a good place to... Another good place to put this. I'm going to put it back up here where it'll be... All around. I can at least swivel it around. If I really want to, I can, I can kind of do it. Let's see. I move that air cleaner. I'm going to go ahead and put it on over here. Just put that on. Get up here and put it on, and then I'm standing on the ladder. Just got to curl on up. I'm always putting these gloves on. Just curling up is good way to really hurt your hands because you got to put lots of pressure on them. My hands are... Oh, I figured out which way to jump my legs. My hands are tender. Everything's tender when you get old. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, got to make sure your uh, duct tape is still good so that you don't... There's, that's for a PVC hose, but this uh, 
PVC goes into the bottom of the carburetor on this thing. Doesn't have an extra one. I always wanted to find like a rubber cover, like the end of a cane or something to put on there, but I never did find nothing like that. Just gotta change that every few years. Every 10 years, so I don't know. Okay. Yeah, it used to be beautiful. You know what? This air cleaner is off of my 70 inch that Chevelle that I tore up and pulled the motor out of after over the <laughs> That's what that is. That's as an original 70 inch Chevelle chrome air cleaner. <clears throat> Well, actually, it didn't have that originally, did it? It had one of those snorkel kind. That was what was on it when I bought it. Or maybe I put that on it. Now I don't remember. It's from 1976, 77 is when I got it. So it can be a little rusty, you know. Give it a break. <clears throat> I'd like to clean all that junk up and I'd be more working buying one. Well, be cheaper to clean it up and paint it or something, put some rust oleum on it and stuff, but I need to paint the headers before they rust out. And put some of that header treatment on them. <coughs> but I'm lucky to just keep her running these days. And every time I unplug the power from it and move it around, I forget to plug it back. It'll go down on me really quick. I'm gonna do air cleaner water. <clears throat> now that the air cleaner's out of the way, I can show my water area. Area, area. Okay, now this is actually a rather hard one to get loose, and I don't think it's hot enough to spew on me. But it is warm enough that I'm going to pull some gloves to, uh, well, just to keep it from hurting my hands so bad when I twist on it. As long as you've got something that'll get a hold of it and don't slip, they'll help. Let's see, I think I'll turn this ladder around the opposite direction. Use, I don't know on the first click. We're good. Okay. Of course, you do have the bottle with this thing. Where's the water? I can't see that there. I have to go get a light. It's pretty full. I was starting to say I might put a little amperage in it to, to top it off, but it's right up there. So I guess I won't. Okay, let's put you back. I do want to get that. I really kind of want to get that cardboard out of the front. That's, I keep. I actually got to where I just leave it all the time because it doesn't overheat in the summer, but you need cardboard in the winter to make it. I mean, it broke, but the bottle's still good. But, uh, let's see if I can show you just the size of these cables. Where are they? You can see that that's the wire right there. It's my thumb. There. This thing's getting in my way to get close. I've got it wired up, too. I didn't want to unwire it. So, those are some humongous cables and they are fantastic we, well you wouldn't know the difference if you hadn't you know experienced when you drive them timed up high like this but uh, it's a 350 by the way small block now I'm all I must have turned this wrong or something 
it the way I thought it did. Three fifty small block. I don't remember what kind of horsepower. It's. Well, of course, with the cam added and all that, it wouldn't be. I don't know what it would be exactly. It's not nothing real high. It's built for going torque for four wheeling with those big tires. So they got 308 gears and those big old tires. Even the 33s makes for a pretty high gear ratio. So it actually had a lot more grunt, and a lot more good uh, four wheeling ability when I put that other cam in because it just had a regular stock engine before. Same covers and all that junk, but the motor wasn't built at all. Let's see. Look at the battery. 850 cranking amps. Cannot see a date on it at all. I don't know. Maybe they don't do that anymore. Yeah, three, 850 cold cranking amps. That's pretty good. A thousand total, whatever, rate when it's not cold. There's my bag of sunglasses. Reserve capacity 150, which is a pretty good sized battery. And you know, <laughs> when you go to get anything at the auto stores anymore, and I guess this is normal to everybody but old people, you, you know, you can't walk in there and say, Give me this for a 350 Chevy engine. They go, Well, what kind of car is it? Well, it's not a car, it's a truck. Well, you know, on and on, they got they don't know how to look it up unless they get the make and model number. Well, what if you got something in there that didn't come out of your. Uh, didn't be, I never was put in it, like my 64 panel truck. I put a 454 and a turbo 400 transmission in it. Now, I didn't ever have no trouble getting parts for that back in the 70s and 80s. Uh, but now, they can't look it up. They can't look anything up that's not stock. They don't have a clue how to do it. Used to, the guys in the local auto stores would just walk back there and get it. They didn't look nothing up. They had it in their head. Okay, enough of a rant. Now, let's go and... Uh, keeps getting in my way. I want to look at all my, uh, I don't know if I can see that from there or not. We'll see. Power steering fluid. That's excellent. Check out. Let me try to put this in a little bit different place. Maybe I can reach it without crawling all the way up in there. Yeah, I think I'm near it. Yeah. Hose is in the way. Can't move that. Okay, let's see. Yep, it's good. It's pretty good for setting for two years. So nothing leaks when it's setting, not really at all. That's good. Oh yeah, I need to check the tires. I'm not gonna make you I'm not gonna make a video of that. But I just wanted to show the engine stuff and everything. Uh, I bought me a whole new kit. So I can show it. Yeah, I can just do it like that, I think. I bought me a rebuild kit for my windshield washer pump. It didn't do a thing. I used to have an add-on electric one. Well, they're all electric, but an add-on that worked for quite a few years, too. I don't know, 15 years, at, no longer than that, but anyway, 20 years, I don't know, but it quit working, so. Then I discovered these rebuilding kits, but it didn't do anything, so. I guess there's something wrong inside of it deeper. It wasn't just the little rubber seals, basically, is what that rebuilding kit was. So, that didn't help. Did get a good price and everything on it, but have you ever heard of rockauto.com? It's pretty good, really, they, and they have a lot of stuff for old vehicles. And then they have a lot of OEM stuff, you know, like buyouts and stuff. It's pretty cool. So, uh, there's my fuel filter that I fiddled with. It doesn't have that much in it, so at first I thought it was really. Well, I'm not going to fool with it today. I'll, I'll go ahead. Must, I might actually go try to get it inspected. Before it gets too hot. It's already hot. Let's see. Time I get get it all filled, you know, all kind of I do want to 
signal that leaves out from them under there. I did want to. The whole thing. I was debating about whether to. I don't. If I blow them out, they'll just go over and blow dust in my face. It works pretty good with the air compressor. If I try to use the vacuum, all the sticks will probably get stuck in the hose. If I pick them up one at a time, I'll just hate that. <laughs> I think I'll try the shop vac. It's pretty powerful. It's got a big hose on it. So. And first, I think I'll do the tires. That's more important. So. for today we'll call it done pretty much all right it's done and uh those were 76 blazers so that was a, a fuel transfer tube on a holly 600 carburetor i replaced you didn't see the work on this video you saw just to start up and me rambling today yes you look at the previous video for the actual work if you've never done it before you're just interested or whatever Alright, bye-bye.